In May 2019, a non-profit organisation was formed by a Scottish family after the loss of their son and brother. In their three years, Tiny Changes has supported and raised the voices of young people. This documentary will explore their work and why it's important. I spoke with Cara, Tiny Changes CEO, to discuss the creation of the charity. How and when did you hear about the charity and kind of what made you want to get involved? About just almost three years ago, um, I first got involved in Tiny Changes. Um, so yeah, I've been involved for almost three years and I first heard about Tiny Changes online. I saw uh, the Instagram post that went up um, when the charity was first started and I'm a Frightened Rabbit fan and I just was really excited at the idea of uh, like the first of its kind, like a, a mental health charity for children and young people in Scotland. One of the things that struck me when I met the Hutchison's was They've, they've said to me a few times, so in 2018, when Scott, the front man of Frightened Rabbit, took his own life, his family just knew, I think, quite early on that they wanted to do something that would make a difference. I think what came out of Scott's own work and his words and his art and also them as a family, the Hutchison's felt like a lot of tiny changes could make a difference. Um, and so the line, while I'm alive, yeah. I'll make any changes to earth is where the name of the charity comes from and it's also where it all started so they did some research so the Hutchinsons really went out there and they like they spoke to people they had meetings this is just before I met them um and they yeah they from what they've told me they, they just noticed that there was a gap so there was no national charity for children and young people's mental health in Scotland they did their research and they thought about it and they decided no actually we want to do early intervention so the idea behind that is you work with children and young people at an earlier point in their life maybe when they're showing some symptoms of mental illness or or even if they're not if even if they're just young people who are navigating their way through growing up in puberty um, and then into their 20s and just just us working with young people some way to help talk about mental health mental illness um, feelings. The idea is that if we if we work on that early enough, then it'll become something that's less stigmatized and also something that's better understood. And then young people themselves will start to build the tools to help themselves keep themselves safe and feel better. Um, and the, yeah, the concept is doing that in tiny ways. So still being ambitious that we can make a big difference. Um, and the concept is it is making lots of tiny changes to earth. I think mental health in young people is something that's to be addressed. Um, you know, I could have done something like that when I was younger, particularly in my early teens, maybe throughout my teenage years. I feel like in some cases young people are just told to, you know, stop overreacting really. Uh, I think having a charity in place, that means they, they know they're not alone, that's a great thing. There's a stigma around male mental health and the more we can do to break down that stigma, I think, you know, that's, what, that's the definitely direction we need to go in. I knew from the beginning of, of working with the charity that I would like it to be, yeah, as, as youth-led as it could be. So some people on the team are young people, so the people that I work with day to day, um, but I wanted it to be so much more than that. Um, I, I didn't want us just to do the bare minimum. I thought, actually, let's see, and, and everybody agreed, like one of our big goals is about raising young people's voices. We created a forum and we said, like, we'd love, love to hear from young people across Scotland um, or who've lived in Scotland. Um, and are under 30 and would like to volunteer and just we, we chose the term wave makers we I had a chat with the young people that I work with already um, and that's what we came up with um, and I guess the idea is really to make waves in Scotland so we're just getting started but over 150 people responded to that there were so many young people already out there who just and every single person who applied um, wrote something about why they wanted to become a wave maker and to make waves and make a change in Scotland around mental health and it was so powerful to read them because you know I went through and read 150 of these um, statements and some people had their own experiences of mental illness um, and crises others had people close to them that had died by suicide or they just knew people who were unwell um, and, and every single person just wanted things to be different in Scotland and there, there was that shared passion that the team already has but it was so great to like start to feel like all of these young voices saying that and at this point um, over the past year 
everything that I've done where there's been big decisions to be made, young people have been involved. And that's what we've we've done with the Wave Makers. So when we've chosen chosen which projects to fund or when we've recruited young uh, recruited new people to the board and um, we're about to do recruitment for some staff at all of these points young people are involved and in actually sitting in the room and making the decisions and that feels really good that's the right thing to be doing i think um, a charity that's targeted young people if young people with that, that experience are involved in a charity that's a great thing you know it means other young people can have somebody they can relate to like if you're if you go to a charity and it's older people who might not have the same level of relatability um, so our, our goals at the moment are build, raise and inspire. Um, and build is all about building a community. So we have we have this existing community. A lot of them are people that came via the band and Fright and Rabbit, but also, like I said, new people, which is so exciting. Um, so we're building that community up um, to make a difference and transform children and young people's mental health. Our second goal is, is called Raise, and it's around raising young people's voices up. Um, so we're doing that through the wave makers, but we're also doing that through um, like some advocacy scoping. So we're trying to get to know like the rest of the mental health organizations, like what's happening in Scotland, where we sit as a charity, what we might want to do, like if we go into that area and we want to raise up young people's voices, are we taking them to decision makers? Are we is it going to be in the media? Like where our goal is to is to raise, but also to to work out the best way to do that. Um, and then the third goal is inspire, um, and it's all about inspiring change. Um, and we are funding projects at the moment. So our main business model at the moment is grant making. So we give out funds to projects and individuals who've got a great idea about how they might want to help improve young people's mental health. Um, so yeah, that's all about inspiring people to, to come up with ideas that, that will make change. As well as funding projects across Scotland, an example of one of Tiny Changes, Tiny Change, can be found in Glasgow Strathclyde University Union. A hope mural created with their bespoke lettering as a relaxing space for students to socialise, unwind and reflect. It's a nice quiet a nice quiet corner and you know I as a as an introvert I like quiet corners. You know, if I was um if I need somewhere quiet to go, that's definitely where I'd where I'd go. The tragic suicide of Scott Hutchison is a key point in the charity's history. Fans of the popular Scottish band came together to talk about their grief, mental health and to fundraise in Scott's name. I'm Heather. Uh, I started and run the Make Tiny Changes sticker Instagram for Adam, who is the sticker man. And I'm a huge Fine Rabbit fan. <laughs> Stickers started appearing in Edinburgh. Fans started papping them and posting them in the, the fan group going, who's doing this? Who's doing this? This is amazing. Um, and we tracked him down um, and his name is Adam. And he uh, he just didn't want Scott to be forgotten. He went out, he printed some stickers, he put them around all over Edinburgh, and then he started to put them out other, um, everywhere else. He started sending them out to fans all, all over, all over the world um, for free. Um, and then people started saying, well, we want to donate. So we started collecting donations, um, which uh, he started by um, sending to mental health charities. We tried to do it in each country of people that had posted stickers. Um, and then obviously tiny changes happened. And that's where we started sending the money. As the stickers started going around, um, people started posting these pictures in the fan group. And I approached Adam. I still have never met Adam in person despite the fact that I refer to him as boss all the time. Um, I approached him and said, can I start an Instagram for this? And I wanted to create a place where all of these pictures were to bring everyone together. So I just started collecting them um, uh, on an Instagram called Make Tiny Changes. We now have nearly a thousand posts on there and nearly 5,000 followers. We've got pictures in up Everest base camp. We've got them in Iceland, Australia, Scotland, England, America, USA, they're everywhere. Um, and it's just incredible. It's kind of, it feels like it's connected everyone together. Um, so in total, we've raised over £11,000 for mental health charities and £6,500 of that has gone directly to Tiny Changes. Anything that's bringing attention to um, young minds um, and making a focus on awareness, but also actually putting money into resources as well um, uh, to create events, training, 
safe spaces um, is wonderful. And also I think th the fans needed somewhere to put their love. <laughs> they, they just they just needed a direction. Um, they'd, you know, we, we'd been looking at ways to how can we help? How can we raise money? How can we raise awareness? And I think the Tiny Changes charity being started was like this beacon and it was a big, lovely green go sign for us to all just start charging at it and start raising money for it. So it's a good double, double edged sword. <laughs> so there's definitely a strong connection between Freight and Rabbit and Tiny Changes and that's natural and that that's where the charity is inspired and came from and I think what what's most exciting for me is that yeah that the way that Scott's legacy can continue through this charity to some extent and um, so the brand that that was created in lockdown actually we worked with a design studio in Glasgow called Ilka it's very much inspired by Scott's artwork his handwriting we have a bespoke font um, that's that's called Extra Super Very, which is the name of um, a Frightened Rabbit song, um, and it's it's inspired by Scott's own on writing, the way that he he used to design lettering, um, which is very special. And we also have some little icons in there that are um, based on his drawings. So we've got like a little duck. He used to like drawing ducks, and we've got like a star, and we've got the cloud. There's like some clouds that are like quite well known in his artwork. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Frightened Rabbit, um, and I, I think the young people's lives that have been affected so far that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Fight and Rabbit and their fans so it's really mm. special that we we have that connection to the music and, and the music industry we don't just want to work with the music industry we want to make sure that we we work with lots of different um like companies and industries and um yeah we don't want to to limit ourselves to that but it's a more it's been a more natural place for us to start has been to raise money through you know musical events and and to work with with some people in that sector and um, but we're yeah we're trying to keep it balanced and have a mixture of we also really want people to feel welcome that maybe don't know Frightened Rabbit and um, have never heard of the band um, or they maybe are into different music or they're into something else that's not music that's really important to us as well and um, so we're working on that we're hoping it feels inclusive and welcoming to everybody and um, but there's definitely there always will be a, a connection between the band and the charity I think. Um, so the best thing to do is just to get in touch and we really want people to do that we will well, there'll be more opportunities advertised over the next year and um, for ways for young people to get involved and um, so I really hope that more young people do and I hope that everyone feels welcome what's exciting is that my plan as CEO over the next like year is to go out and meet young people across Scotland get to know some young people talk to them about what we're doing and and make some changes together so yeah, get involved in that if you see me out on the road, which hopefully I will be soon. Um, I'd love to meet meet more people. Oh, I'm alive.